there. I'm board certified professional organizer, Kathy Burns. I'm really glad you're here. This podcast is designed for busy entrepreneurs just like you who want to take better control of your business and move forward with less stress and more success. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. The Organized Energized Podcast is produced for your enjoyment and show notes are found at thepodcast.organizedandenergized.com. Come back often and feel free to add this podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. You can also follow me on Twitter at Organized Energy and Facebook. All links are in the show notes. Now let's get into the show. Hi, everyone. We're back and I am here to interview Stasha Washburn. Now you're going to think this is awesome because Stasha is the period coach. You know, the bloody kind, not the grammar kind. She's the founder of the Period Coaching School and author of The Revolution Will Be Bloody. She's inventor of the world's first period oracle card deck. She's also a dancer, cook, sword fighter, Tai Chi practitioner, speaker, skateboarder, on and on and on and on. She'll go anywhere as long as there's a tea kettle and Wi-Fi. She is a travel about girl. In fact, she's heading off to Australia. Anyhow, she's a certified holistic health coach. She has 25 plus years of research, and that's fueled her passion to reconnect women to the power in their period. Stasha is the leading bloody revolution to end the taboo of menstruation worldwide. No longer whispers in the bathroom. She's leading powerful public discussions, and that's what we're going to do right now. So fasten your seatbelts, ladies. We are going for it. Hi, everyone. I'm back. I'm so excited because we have Stasha in the house and we're going to talk about menstruation, your flow, how you can harness it. But first, we're going to jump into her backstory so that you can see where, who she is, why she's here and what she's doing. And then we're going to give you some tips so that you can be productive and energized in your business. So welcome, Stasha. Hello. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. This is going to be a fun conversation. So talk to me a little bit about your background, Stasha. What what have you been doing? Uh, I know you've been an entrepreneur for what, 25 years, right? Um, A little bit. I certainly started off, um, I was actually in the restaurant industry back in the day. So I started holding my own pop-up events in Los Angeles, doing like pop-up dinner events and afternoon teas and sushi on artwork Thursdays. So <laughs> it's been a journey. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, oh boy. So I actually got started doing the work that I'm doing now, primarily because I have endometriosis, one of the top 20 most painful conditions in the world, according to the NHS. Ooh. I've had a couple of those other conditions on there, and I will tell you, they were laughably weak in comparison <laughs> to my endometriosis pain. Um, and I just, at a certain point, like I said, I was in the restaurant industry, I bartended, I was a dancer before that, a dance major in college, danced in companies in high school, so like very active life, yeah. um, but drugged, <laughs> amply drugged to make it through. And um and there just came a point where I went, you know what? I was in my early thirties and I was like, oh, I can't do this forever. Like, this isn't going to last like fine. I was hard on my body in my teens. Well, basically from the age of three, but teens and twenties, but I was like, I got to figure out something else to do. So, uh, I was working in a ballet bar studio teaching and I just sort of said, you know, like a lot of people are asking me questions about cooking healthy mm. because I also cooked. So I was, you know, talking with all our clients about healthy eating and ways to make life easier to cook and like kind of that sort of thing. And I thought maybe I'll go back for health coaching. Mm -hmm. The first year the Institute for Integrative Nutrition had an online program that was from New York City. So I had already heard of them and knew them and I was, had moved to California, but I thought they're online now. I'm going to go do this. And then I can see clients from bed and I can close off my calendar the week that I have like my real bad endo. And then I can come back. So I thought, well, at least this is something that I can do that works for me a little bit better instead of like drugging myself and everything to get to work. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I started doing that and I started working with athletes and they all had period problems. <laughs> ah, yeah. So you're trying to perform, right? Yeah. So they all had period problems and I was able to help all of them because I'd spent 20 years researching menstrual cycles and food and health and impact in Chinese medicine and Ayurveda. And I thought, 
Well, if it's not really helping me, I can at least help other people because it was working for them. So I just started doing that and helping other people. And in the process, I developed my own system that actually reduced my endometriosis considerably. Uh, and now that's the system that I teach to my clients, to my students, to my coaching students. I'm training people to become period coaches now. So I train them in that system. It's very bio individual and unique. So it works for any client. So it was just kind of like a, a little series of fortunate events, I guess, uh, based on one very unfortunate event, but we worked it out and now it's great. Now I, I love the work that I do and the clients that I have and the people that I get to talk to and it's fantastic. <laughs> I love that. So for those who don't know, explain endometriosis just a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, where this tissue that's similar to the endometrial lining grows outside of the uterus, which is why hysterectomies don't necessarily work for fixing it. Um, it's thought to be something going wrong with the endocannabinoid system, something that the autoimmune system, but they don't really know a lot about it. It's a 50 50 chance of being infertile there's oftentimes pain involved but because it can grow anywhere in the body people have had it on their heart in their lungs women die from it every single year and men can have it as well biologically cisgendered men can have endometriosis as well it's not common but it can happen so um we're hoping that maybe that will get medical uh people more interested look it's happening to the men <laughs> that is what i was gonna say it's because it was mainly considered a women problem and has not yeah. been researched or you know tried to figure out what the heck is how do we fix this so yeah i'm glad hopefully i mean i'm sorry man but you know maybe more men will get it and we'll get more recognition and actually find a cure for this but you know what i love about your story stasha is that you followed your intuition and you followed your uh in you know first off you help yourself and then that allows you to help others and i think everyone listening out there if you can kind of listen and tune into that yourself if you're looking to maybe make a switch see what you've been doing that you're passionate about that's been helping you and that's going to be your gift that you can move forward and help others and i don't you think that if you do that sasha that you're always going to have a successful business if you just kind of follow your heart and and you keep at it i mean obviously it's not an overnight kind of thing yeah i'm i always tell my clients unless you're from a family with a crap ton of money sheer stubbornness will get you into successful business <laughs> yeah yeah you can pay your way or you can be stubborn <laughs> exactly you know i started my company on 49 dollars, so i get that you know you know yep, i had the bare minimum 25 dollars in my savings account <laughs> there you go girl oh you beat me then you're 25 i'm 49 so and here we are right <laughs> exactly <laughs> so so talk to me about uh cycling and productivity and how you know um i do have a few clients who just really get shut down at that time of the month and you know they're like we've got to reschedule our appointment so what are some workarounds that you've discovered that you could give advice for for women out there that are struggling with a similar thing yeah so across the board if you're struggling and you identify as female, I would say tap into the moon cycles. And if you have a menstrual cycle, tap into your menstrual cycle because it's stronger until you flip into wise woman and then it's more of a moon cycle thing. But we're very cyclical beings. And that is really that monthly cycle is what we're good at. So you have to stop thinking of your work day as a day and a repeatable five day a week process. Mm -hmm. So instead of Monday at nine is planning, 10 is social media. 11 is admin, lunch, Facebook groups, you know, clients, whatever. Instead of it being like this thing that you do every day and that every day you're, you know, trying to beat yesterday's high score, think of it more like a month and one day in a month. So instead of this is the time that I do my planning, it's follicular is the time that I do my planning. This in this week, I will go through and look at the year plan, the 10 year plan, the, the quarterly plan and this week's plan and, ex and execute things, right? So you have to start thinking of things in a bigger grand scheme of things. Review is your luteal phase, that time right before your menstrual cycle, the week to two weeks before your actual period. It's a great time to review, to reflect, to see what worked, to see what didn't work. And mm -hmm. 
and use that because, and I say this lovingly, if you think about the few days before your period, when you're mad at everything and everyone, and you want to murder people with a rusty spoon, um, you know, what's not working clearly. Oh, smart. Right. So if you can just remove the judgment of this isn't working and it's my fault, which is what we do as women, <laughs> but to say, okay, this isn't working. Don't judge it. Don't try to fix it, but just note it. And then you can move into the menstrual phase where your hormones all come down to a base level, a little clearer, and you can go, okay, now why isn't this working? And then how do we fix it? And then you can go and fix it. So you can do that with your business. You can do that with relationships. You can do that with anything. But if you're running a business and you find yourself sitting at a blank screen or like you can't get something done, or you're just getting really frustrated, you're probably in the wrong phase for that action. Mm. You just need to switch around. Your brain chemistry changes with your hormones and it just gives you superpowers in each phase. We just don't respect all of our superpowers. Some are more highly prized than others. So we prize you know, productivity in a capitalist patriarchal society. But we also need the rest, the self-care, that, that time for ourselves. And we have strengths for those times. And if we can embrace it, it actually makes it much easier. And I think we all know that. You go on vacation for a couple of weeks and you come back and you are excited about your business again. You're rejuvenated. You're ready to work. You're excited about stuff. So we know that rest works. We just don't give it to ourselves. And if we do, we're oftentimes not doing it in like the best phase of our cycle to really capitalize on it. Mm, that's so smart. I mean, I, you know, that's a whole new perspective for me. I, I totally believe in blocking time. And if you know what you should be doing, you know what you didn't do. So I think what you're saying follows right along with what I'm telling my clients already, just know what you want to get accomplished, but you don't have to pigeonhole yourself. So say Monday is admin day, but it gets just junked up for whatever reason, your car gets in the shop or whatever, then, then you know that it's something that you have to get back to, but it does doesn't have to be such a have to do thing. And as artistic creative, I mean, most, most of us women entrepreneurs are artistic creatives. So we don't like to be put into that box anyhow, but we do have to have the plan. <laughs> you know, yes. uh, have it be flexible is, is brilliant. And following your cycle is really, really an interesting, uh, an idea. And I, I'm so, you know, I applaud you for doing this, Tasha, because I don't think that anybody else out there is talking about this. And it's not popular, no. It's not popular. And, and you know, uh, yeah, some, some places it's even just, you know, women go away when you're in that uh, thing. I know that, uh, yeah. I think it's I think it's huge what you're doing. Okay, so follow your cycles. And I love the idea of reviewing when you're cranky. <laughs> That's so smart. So right, right after your flow, and you're back into it, what's the best thing to do after that? What's what do you think? So when you uh, come out of menstruation, your estrogen starts to rise and your estrogen is directly tied to your verbal skills. So it also helps for strategy. So, well, that's also a combination of things that are going on. Don't, you know, don't tell me, go out and say, small Stasha said estrogen is strategy. No, it's, it's a whole combination of things, but <laughs> the estrogen is strategy to verbal skills. And then as things are going, we're really good at that strategy. So I always call follicular the how phase. So in my system, there's the what, why, how, do. So in Lou, you know what's working, what's not working. I always say, look at the good side too. You know, you know what's not working, but what is? We on both sides of the coin there. <laughs> Menstrual, you're really good at the why. Hormones are a baseline. You've got a clearer head there. So why is this working? Can we do more? Why isn't this working? Do we automate it? Do we get rid of it? Do we delegate it? You know. So in follicular, you can start talk, that girl. strategy, right? Exactly. So in follicular, we can do the strategy. Okay. Well, if we automate it then I'm going to go get in there and do some tech nerd stuff. If we're going to delegate it, then I need to call a meeting with my VA. If I'm going to eliminate it, then I might still need to call a meeting with my VA and let them know. <laughs> you, you can start to do that. It's also a great time to record. If you batch your content, you can write in Ludio when you're very like passionate and then you can edit in menstrual and maybe the beginning of follicular and then ovulation when that estrogen peaks, the testosterone peaks, the confidence peaks, you can go batch record, 
And then you've got your whole month of content ready to go. You can edit in early luteal when you're still feeling good. And then that's it for the next month. You just hit play, you know, upload. Yeah. 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 This is why yeah. I like you because we're right on the same page with that. Like, yeah. Chunk it out, baby. Chunk it out. Yep. Good in chunks. <laughs> yep. <It's> the only way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It keeps you, keeps you sane and keeps you feeling like, hey, I'm really making a lot of progress here. It's great. Yep. And, and when you have those days where you really can't function, you've got the backup. Yeah, um, exactly. I mean, I have full disclosure of five ish days that I can't. My fatigue is the one symptom that remains that there's just not much I can do about. I get very dizzy, very faint. So like getting to the kitchen and back, sometimes I have to stop and mm -hmm. rest. Um, and if I do push, I end up with cramps and that endo flare starts. And then I, of course, panic a bit and the PTSD kicks in and I'm all tapping, even though I'm feeling crampy, it's never going to be like it was before, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I, I, I don't like to do that. So I just give myself that time. My clients know that there's going to be about one week a month that they may not be able to schedule. And they know to make sure they get their two sessions in per month, but there's going to be a Sometimes it falls on a weekend and I'm fine and the calendar's open and no one knows. Sometimes it doesn't. So everyone knows, clients know. Um, I consider it just modeling, taking care of yourself in the way that you need to. And at the end of the day, I mean, I've tracked my hours religiously for two years now and I work half-ish what a normal person works. So a normal 40 hour work week is about 2080 hours. So 2080 hours in a year. Uh, in 2021, I worked 1,152, and last year I worked 1,162. So I work about half time, but I created a Kickstarter, created a whole new period Oracle card deck, run my period coaching school, have my private clients, you know, grow the list, like all of the things get done in half the time because mm -hmm. we're chunking with our cycle. Yeah. And yeah. we're just chunking in general is, is fantastic. Yeah. You know, I just moved, this is my new studio. Um, and you know, I had to take off four weeks of, you know, mm -hmm. recording any podcasts or doing anything really business wise. But fortunately I had all this stuff in the back load that tick, 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 my podcast still came out every week. And, you know, chunking is, is just so much easier to do that. And I'm really glad to be back in action. Uh, but I was really, really glad to have that latitude to not have to stress and worry. You know, my media manager just kept popping stuff out because everything was just there and ready to go. So, uh, yay, you know, there's something to be said about chunking. So talk to me about a time, uh, you know, before you kind of figured this out, tell me about a low that you had. I mean, I know you've had a lot with your, um, let's talk about a low in business, which probably does have to do with, you know, a low with flow, but. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get yourself out of that? Like, what do you do when you're feeling, you know, peaked out or down or unable to even do anything? What's your, what's your go-to? Oh, well, I think the biggest low in my business was when I was transitioning. I had a partner who spent all of my money and the $25 in my account um, I was running the pop-up restaurant, which is exhausting. And I was seeing athlete clients, which was also exhausting in its own way. Um, and yeah, he just spent everything and I went, okay, well, we're breaking up. I need to move. I have nowhere to go. I'm going to go live on my best friend's living room futon, I guess. And, um, and that's actually when I, I basically said, you know what, I'm putting together the periodcoach.com. I'm just going to wholeheartedly embrace instead of like hormonal balance coaching. I was Stasha health catalyst before that. And then I was, you know, Stasha hormonal balance coach. And I was like, you know what? We're just going to call it what it is. We're oh, going to confront the taboo with the business name right then and there. And, uh, and yeah, I dove in big time and I really just sat at my best friend's kitchen table. God bless her. Thank you, Noel. Uh, and put together the whole website and, and start launched the business really. And that was, um, a year of intense self-care 
again, thank you, Noel, who would not allow me to just sit and work, <laughs> who forced me to go to like the Korean spas because it was 15 bucks to get in. And she'd be like, I got it. We're going. You could spend the whole day, 15 bucks, just get in the car. Um, we're going to free Met Gala night tonight. We're going, you know, so she just, she paid attention to things that were going on in LA. She kept them price conscious or just did it. <laughs> but she made sure I got out of the house and took care of myself and rested and rejuvenated, you know, went to the tubs, all that good stuff. Um, and it was a really good, um, really inner working year, you know? So she helped substantially with that and keeping myself moving forward. Um, and it stuck. Right. So after that first year, the business was up and running. I had some clients. I was, I started doing you know, business, your flow and teaching women how to run their businesses, their cycle. And it, first launch was great. And we had, we made some money and it was like, ha. Oh. so then we just, you know, that was it. We just celebrated. And then I started traveling to speak. So it's kind of nice not having a home because I was on the road six months out of the year more after that. So yeah, it all worked out really well. And it was that like full on doubling down of like, I'm just doing it wholeheartedly doing it. And I'm going to deeply self care in the process. Yeah, you were so blessed to have someone to remind you to self care. Yes. And you know, for the women out there, you're listening, make sure you do self care. And I hope to, I hope and pray that you have someone in your life that will keep reminding you. But you know what, you're responsible. And if, if there you don't have anybody to do that, you need to do that for yourself. Because just like you now you get so much done in less time. Because your whole you know, you're whole, you're centered, you're vibrant, you, you know, you know what you're doing. So that's fantastic. Or be the person that takes somebody else out. Like, yes, you are the one like, you know what, like, I'm going to go make sure that my bestie is doing self care. Hey, you're still doing self care for yourself. But like, you know, take someone along with you. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. The really, really good point. Okay. So you're very productive. So talk to me about your favorite organizing hack. What do you do? What's your favorite little tactic to keep yourself organized? Obviously I, you get a lot done in a little bit amount of time. Uh, I don't think that everything would get done if it weren't for Asana. And uh, I go in there and I set dates like for the year. So we get launches that pop up, things that are going to supposed to be happening pop up. We get alerts that things are coming and reminders. And um, I think that, you know, I sit down, I plan out the whole year at the, at the end of the year, the beginning of the year. And I, and I know exactly what I can do. I can do a Kickstarter. I can do a summit. I can do two launches for programs. You know, I can write a book. I know what I can do in a year. And so I put it all on there and then we put all of it into Asana and we already have the SOPs for everything. So the webinars are its own board, the Kickstarter is its own board, the summit's its own board. And we go through and it links to all the spreadsheets, all the documents. So when you're in Asana, you can go, okay, I need to go email the speakers for the summit. And then you just can just click the link. There's the spreadsheet. There's everyone's email address done. So Love it. I think Asana Love it. is the glue. <laughs> yeah, I use Trello and it's, you know, similar thing. And yeah. thank God for, for programs like this, you know, Trello or Asana, um, check into it, uh, listeners, if you haven't really done anything and you're getting ready to ramp. Uh, and if you are ramped and you feel like there's a bunch of loosey gooseys floating around, get yourself something like that, you know, Asana or Trello, because it, it's a way to communicate with your team and it's a way to keep yourself on track. Yeah. I love that. So whenever you go into a sauna and you organize, do you organize it? Uh, so you, you does the calendar uh, when you set your whole year in advance, um, you know that you're going to have like, you know, uh, this is pretty amazing, by the way, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to do a Kickstarter to some, it's like, go girl, go. So, at, so in the sauna, how does that uh, work out calendaring wise? Like, uh, does it tie in with your main Google calendar and you have the events or well, how are you working them? I don't have it connected. So what I do is I go in at the beginning of the year and I'll just put things for the beginning of the month. So okay. if we're in like pre-launch and it's like, we need to update the landing pages for this bit, this freebie. 
and yeah. it'll just go on to the beginning of the month. So then when we get closer to things and we start to shake dates out, I start putting in more specific dates. So then it's like, okay, the webinar is going to be at this day, at this time. And then I will go and put that information in. So yeah. we put everything in just month chunks. So it just starts off with like the Kickstarter is going to be in May. The uh, business launch is the, for the business program is going to be June. July yeah. and August will be prep for period coaching school launch. September yeah. will be the period coaching success summit. The period coaching success webinar doors will open to the school. November will be the Black Friday sale. December will be the period presence giveaway, right? Okay. So every month has its like main thing. Yeah. And then the rest just, we do it with flow. So it's like, okay, I'm in Ludial. Who needs graphics? This webinar needs graphics. Those slides <laughs> need to finish. And I've got a class I'm teaching the school. Today is Canva day. <laughs> <laughs> I love Canva. <laughs> Right. So, it's so much fun. Like we can work on a whole bunch of different projects, but it's still the same thing. So you're not task switching very much. Yeah. You're still working in like a nice flow. You're getting a lot done, but you're knocking out this thing that needs to be done three months from now, but it needs to be done. And we're here. So let's get it done because we're also working on this thing. And then, you know, that's how also branding consistency. We know how important that is. So if you're working in chunks like that, your branding stays more consistent. It's less like, oh, this crazy thing for this webinar and then totally different for that. So it really I helps. Love. Love, 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 love. That's so powerful. Um, you know, I do a similar thing with the monthly, you know, what's what's the intention of this month? And uh, so, yeah, it, it's so funny because we do very much similar things with a little bit different tactic. And um, I just love hearing the different ways that people go about doing things because like, oh, I could I could do that or I could add that. And uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Um, OK, so what should have I ask you that I have not asked you about? <laughs> what do we need to talk about here? There's, I mean, we could go on for like hours about this, but uh, what's on your, what's burning in your mind that you want to talk? About? Well, I think one of my um, just get on a soapbox and preach topics is how important it is to understand menstrual cycles. Even if you don't have one, if you are working with clients who have them, it's so easy to be a problem. So 90% of people are going to have a hormonal imbalance. If you are working with someone with a cycle, <laughs> and anything that we do negatively or positively impacts the hormonal balance, there's no middle ground, right? So if you give somebody an ovulation, a seated meditation, you are setting them up for failure. And then you're going to wonder why they're not showing up for your sessions. Or if you give somebody a cleanse in luteal, you're setting them up A for failure, but also B, you're not giving them the nourishment that they need in that phase of their cycle. You're taking it away. So you're going to increase their PMS symptoms. Next month, it might be better, but for this month, you're going to make it worse. So there's just business relationship. Are you really going to have your client go home and have a conversation with their husband the day before her period? Really? You know, like it doesn't matter what the subject is, it affects the hormones, movement affects them, sound, sight, you know, what, what are we choosing to see? What are we choosing to listen to? Everything affects our hormonal balance. So I would love to just see more coaches, more women, more women who have women friends, more men, frankly, learn at least the basics so that you can probably work with your clients, you can help your niece, you can help your daughter, you know, whatever the circumstances are. But I would love just to, the whole world to get a proper baseline education. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's your mission and, and you're yeah. doing it. So yeah. how do you broach the topic? If you're a coach and you're working with clients, how do you broach the topic of their cycle uh, yeah. you know, without saying, hmm, you seem a little bit cranky today? Or, <laughs> well, depending on your client, different ways. So the easiest is if you're, you have your intake form for your clients and the easiest thing to do is just put a question on there that says, if you're menstruating, I love to work with my clients in flow. Are you comfortable talking about this? Yes. No. Ah, right? Okay. So right there, you can make it very easy. Um, if you already have clients that you want to bring it up, one of my suggestions is to just say, Hey, I learned this really cool thing about menstrual cycles and how 
what I do here affects them. So I would love if you didn't mind talking about your cycle and where you are and seeing if we can't make some tweaks that could really improve not just the work we're doing, but also perhaps that headache you mentioned that you get every month or those cramps that you get or that fatigue or the brain fog or the, whatever it is, right? right? So it's, you know, it can be as see, easy as like, I learned this really cool information and I'd love to share it with you if that's okay. And putting it on your intake form. So my okay. business coach clients put it, put that on their intake form. My health coach, my relationship coach, they usually do a few more questions and it's just sort of implied that we're going to talk about our menstrual cycles in these. Um, but the rest of them that are maybe not as intuitively like, oh yeah, I can see how that they'll just put a question on there and then they can have that conversation with them. Okay, brilliant. That's great. So that's easy, easy takeaway tip for you listeners out there. There you go. Um, okay, so you have this Oracle deck. So I have to hear about this just a little bit. And then, you know, we got to do a wrap, but let's talk about the Oracle cards. Because they're pretty yeah. cool. So my, my partner is um, an artist and he created the visuals for this card deck. Um, but we have all of these amazing cards that are take us through my sensual system. So we have a goddess for each phase of the cycle and each phase has a season associated with it. So like this one is clearly the winter, the menstrual card, winter season. Mm -hmm. So all of the card backgrounds have a little nod to the season that they represent. It represents the new moon, yin energy, water energy so a lot of the cards in that particular phase have it but then we talk about taste so foods that are supportive of your hormones in that phase we talk about sight and sound what's helpful for balancing the hormones in that phase we talk about smell of course our essential oil ladies and our candle ladies love this one <laughs> touch and movement because like i said exercise does can help or hinder your hormonal balance we have the what, why, how do phase cards to help with a bunch of journal questions to help you embrace those and our spirit card. So nice. how is, you know, your, maybe it's meditation, maybe it's journaling, maybe it's whatever, but there's some prompts in the deck. So we have those cards for each phase of the cycle. Okay. And you can use it as an Oracle deck where you can just pick one and go, okay, I guess I'm focusing on smell today. And so you're just going to go be observant of your sense of smell that day, or you can pull the cards out of the phase you're in and have a look and kind of connect and say, oh, you know what movement I'm going to play with movement today or like we do, I'll put a card uh, out for my partner. So especially when I'm moving into deeper luteal and I'm starting to feel fatigued and it's just tough, I'll put the deep luteal goddess out there or I might put the card of the phase I'm in on the refrigerator. So it's just like a nice reminder of like, oh, I'm going to go snack. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm in follicular. What's a good follicular snack? Oh, hummus and celery. Yeah, that'll do, right? So you can kind of have a play with how you want to use them, but they're great for communication and partnerships because you can like, there's a chocolate card in the deck. You can just like hand your partner a chocolate card and just be like, <laughs> throw chocolate and run, babe. Throw chocolate and run. <laughs> <laughs> run for the chocolate. Yeah. You Bring know, it all quick. Yeah. So it really like a big part of it was we spent two years playing with sample decks and using them as communication. And he did too. He would be like, you know, I'm feeling really kind of energized and full moon, which one's the full moon card and go find yeah. it, pull it out. You know, and that's a good point. I mean, men definitely have cycles as well. And I think it's something that we yeah. don't really acknowledge. Um, I see it a lot in my husband and I see it a lot. And well, mainly in my husband, because, you know, I see him every day of the month. So yeah. I can, I can tell when the cycles are happening, you know, I think that, you know, the man's duration thing, <laughs> they, they have their cycles and, you know, I, I agree. I think the moon has so much to do with everything because, you know, we're so much water and the moon, you know, controls the tide. So come on, it's going to control what's happening with our, with ourself as well. Uh, but that's pretty cool. Okay. So a uh, special free treat. You have something that the, that the kiddos can download out here uh, that will help them progress in their business. So talk to us about that. Awesome. So the first thing I have for you, I actually have two things. So the first thing I have for you guys is the productivity uh, freebie. It's a video that I did. It is some of my like top tips for syncing your cycle in your business to up your productivity. So it's a great little, you know, mini video. There's a couple of emails that follow up to give you some extra support and tips along that for implementation. 
And then the second thing kind of goes along with that. So I have a way of charting. So if you want to track your menstrual cycle and know which phase you're in, you can put your period on your on your calendar, but that's just your period. That's not going to tell you I'm in follicular, I'm in ovulation, I'm in luteal, I'm in deep luteal, right? So there's a mandala, a coloring freebie where nice. you can track things like the moon phase. So if you're in perimenopause, you can just track by moon phase. Um, if you're cycling regularly, you can track by your period. But you put your energy, food, movement, basal body temperature, cervical mucus, digestion, moods, and you like you can and you can stylize it, right? Like I'm not worried about pregnancy, so I don't track my cervix, but I do use that to track supplements. So I know what I'm taking when and how it's gonna how it's affecting my mood, my energy, my cycle. So it's a great little thing to help you so you know where you are, and then you can apply the productivity tips much easier. Nice. <laughs> Nice. That's fantastic. I love that. Okay, go ahead and download that, uh, gang, and and uh, put comments. You know, once you play with it a little bit, come back onto the podcast page and put comments for us so we uh, get some feedback and know what's going on. Uh, there's also the six tips to organize your amazing home office. Make sure to download that. That's on the side. Uh, so we have a bunch of productivity stuff that you can download for free. So go ahead and hit it up. And uh, you know, I think this is a wrap. If there's anything else uh, that you'd like to say, Sasha, this has been really, really interesting. And I'm sure that it's stuff that people have not heard yet. So you go girl, I know you're heading down south, you're going to go down under here and, uh, and help some women down there. So uh, I'm just really pleased that we were able to get you on the show and uh, full speed ahead. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. It's been it's been a real pleasure. And we will talk when you resurface. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Signing off for now. We'll see you next week. Hey, thanks for listening to this podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you want to hear more, feel free to subscribe on the platform of your choice. Also, if you feel so inclined, I would truly appreciate a good rating from you to me. Have a stellar day.